So moving down the list, the Ranger is a uh, basically a uh, like a, a woodsman who uh, can converse with converse with nature to a limited degree. They're kind of like a, a tracker or hunter. There's a you know subgroup called the Stalker. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, as they get super high level, they can start to, to cast some very limited, I believe, druid spells. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's basically, otherwise, they're very similar to fighters, only I don't believe they get to use all the same same armor. I don't think they can use any uh, metal armor. Uh, so they're kind of limited to, I think it's chain mail and lower. Don't quote me on that, but it, that may be the case. Uh, there's then the, the sub kits of Archer, because. This, this game, again, came out at the very end of 2nd edition. 3rd edition came out, I believe, in 2000. The Baldur's Gate 2 actually released in 2000, so right at about the time that 3rd edition came out. So that means that, in turn, uh, there were a lot of like uh, what they call splat books in d &D, basically, you know, extra books that give you extra classes to play with and extra things to do with classes. Um, d d has a cycle that it goes about it where they'll come out with the base game, and then they'll just come out with, you know, hey, we, we came up with this idea for this new character. Here's a whole new world to play in. And this whole new world has all these um, bad guys in it. In fact, Forgotten Realms itself was a uh, one of these expansion worlds that you had. The initial Dungeons & Dragons world was a world called Greyhawk that basically had to go away when Gary Gygax split up with uh, TSR back in the 80s. Um, long story about that, you can go online and read about it if you really want to, but essentially out of the ashes of that, uh, the guys who were making TSR, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, the game the company was called TSR, they were later brought up by Wizards of the Coast, who's the same company that currently owns them. So when they lost Greyhawk, basically, they had to go in and create a whole new world. That world was Forgotten Realms. So Forgotten Realms has been around for a while. Uh, came out, I believe, in around 90, 91, around the time that the second edition came out. Um, so by this time, it had a lot of lore behind it. Um, if you're into actually playing the game, by the way, there's a couple of other worlds that are out there. There's uh, the Dark Sun world uh, that 4th edition came out with some stuff with that didn't go very far because it came out at about the same time that the recession hit and nobody was buying their stuff, frankly. Um, also, Eberron, which is which came out in 3rd edition. They made a, an update to 4th uh, for it. Eberron is, in my opinion, like the coolest world that Dungeons & Dragons has made. If you play Dungeons & Dragons online, that's Eberron. The one thing about Eberron, and I don't want to get too much on a tangent about this because this is not, this world's Forgotten Realms, but the big thing about Eberron is that it's not classic, you know, orcs are bad, dwarves and humans and elves are all good and you know they're all the those classic racial stereotypes that you you know know and love from Tolkien they they, they completely reimagine everything i think they reimagine it in a really really cool way but if you're looking for the classic you know that classic lord of the rings style thing Eberron is definitely not that way, and unfortunately that means that D&D online is maybe not the way that you you'd want to go for that um, but anyway i that is way off topic let's get back into the to gameplay uh, or choosing your character. So the other guy, so you got the ranger, you got archer, is pretty self-explanatory. Stalker is is a guy that, you know, can technically go out in the wilderness and find the dude and, and get them. So they get some extra stealth. Backstabbing is generally a thief ability. Um, it's kind of awesome if you move things around correctly. We'll see. Um, I'll try to get my thief to do some backstabbing in the game so you can see that happen. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, in this game, you're with a party all the time, so it's not really, like, single stalking stuff going around. You can do this game with one with one character, and I've seen guys beat this game with one character. It can be done. I'm not going to do it. Um, but there are other YouTube channels that totally do that. So, you know, if, if you're looking for that, by all means, go out and check it out. Uh, the Beastmaster, it was a crappy movie. It was it late 80s, early 90s? But it's also, you know, basically you've got the ability to commune with animals. You can summon animals. Uh, summoning is one of the more overpowered uh, spells in this game. So, that, you know, if you're looking to have a ranger that's a little bit OP, that's the way to go. Uh, the Justifier is kind of, I think we talked about this in uh, episode negative one, uh, that they're basically a bail bondsman equivalent. I mean, you didn't have bail so much back then, but you basically you got thrown to jail until you had a trial. And when you had a trial, too much in the way of prisons. In fact, there were no prisons 
even dungeons were, were essentially only used to throw political prisoners and people waiting trial. Uh, so, you know, what had happened there if you were found guilty of something is usually you'd be executed. Uh, or if you were lucky, you might have your you know hand cut off or uh, get exiled uh, from the town or, you know, whatever. Um, or, you know, pay restitution to the person who you wronged. Um, so, you know, that's basically what the Justice Rider does. Is they're, they're, the idea behind that is they go out and they get people. Um, they've got some extra stealth ability, um, some extra speed and, and to hit armor class zero ability. They don't get a lot of the classic ranger things. And then the feral land is basically a feral child. I think they have the ability. Yeah, they can go into a feral rage. So it's like a ranger with um, berserker abilities. Sort of like what Minsk is actually in the game. We talked about cat pal and the druid cleric. So druids uh, are um, based on the people that were the precursors to the Celts in England. Uh, a lot of people think that those are the people who built the Stonehenge, but they're actually not. That's actually a different uh, group of pre-Roman uh, people there entirely. But to this day, like those folks who go out and worship on the summer solstice, it's Stonehenge, which by the way, I'm told does some weird things. I mean, not like weird, like supernatural, but like light shines through it in weird ways. Um, that are kind of cool, but uh, on, on on the solstices, but those guys are basically reviving the druidic religion. Uh, so the druid is basically like a cleric, only they're more like one with nature. That doesn't mean they're like like a peaceful hippie. They can use a lot of like weapons that clerics can't use, for example. They don't get to use anything that's made of metal, though. So basically, they're locked out at a least studded leather. I think is the biggest uh, the 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 best armor they can wear. Um, so they're not necessarily like the kind of person you want to put in the, in the front line. There's a character that you get. Uh, Jahera is a fighter druid in this game. And so she um, is somebody that, depending on your on your build uh, of characters, you might end up putting her towards the front um, in the beginning until you get some better straight up fighters. Um, I always use Minsk because he's awesome. And Minsk is like the super... Minsk is basically, he's technically a ranger, but he is the guy that you put in the front because he's super strong, he's got a lot of hit points, and he's cool. But if you're playing a druid, a straight up druid, uh, then you, you probably don't want to put your character quite up front the way you might with a regular cleric, even though druids are very similar. The big thing that clerics don't get too is they don't get the ability to turn a dead. That's kind of a big thing between the clerics and druids. Um, it's weird because your Dungeons and Dragons have been out for about almost 20 25 years at the time that this game came out. That's how old that, the game is. But they still hadn't done a whole lot of balancing between the classes yet. There was still a problem in third, although it wasn't as bad as it is in second. Uh, second, actually, and first for that matter, goes around this by making them more overpowered classes. It takes longer to level up in them. Um, third, I believe, removed that. Just gave the same experience tables for everybody. But, um, so, I mean, basically, though, Druids aren't quite as overpowered as clerics. They still have that thing where they're they're basically not quite as good as fighters, but close. And they can cast spells even when in armor, so that's great. When I have a druid, in fact, when I have a Jahera in this game, what I tend to use them for is put them in the second line and have them uh, essentially shoot uh, sling stuff, sling stones at everybody, uh, or cast spells or attack targets of opportunity or, you know, help people out depending on how many bad guys there are, you know, sometimes when you're facing, you'll see in the game, when you're facing off against like eight kobolds, you need to put a wall up in front of you so that they don't run around and go after your magic users in the back. But anyway, that's essentially what druids are for. Uh, they, the, the, they get some healing type spells so you can use them, use Jahera as your healer earlier in the game um, but druids also get a lot of like non uh, healy spells like shillele which basically makes a, a club form in their hand which is kind of badass um, and then they oh that's right they can turn into animals as well which is really like almost the reason why you want to be a druid so that you can turn into a freaking bear and maul everybody it's kind of fun in fact the shapeshifter kind of druid is the um is is the exact one here that you can see you can shapeshifter can turn into a werewolf once per day leave higher level druids get this um 
yeah, see, no other shapeshifting abilities do the effort required. So if you're a shapeshifter, you get the werewolf, which is really badass. If you're a regular druid, you don't get the werewolf, but you get, you can turn into, like, I think a bear, or there's a little, like, a mouse or something that you can turn into. If, like, you need to run away or something. Um, so all that being said, there's also the Detemic Druid, which, yeah, gets you um, the ability to summon a spirit animal. Uh, so you can have that animal basically fight alongside of you, which I think is similar to what they do in 4th edition. Or you can be a, the Avenger, which means that you're Captain America. Um, so you actually, it means that you get more uh, forms you can shapeshift into, uh, but you don't get as many as much armor, and then you get a minus to your strength and constitution for some reason. The reason is the game wants to balance itself mechanically. Um, so that's that. The mage is, in some ways, the... A lot of people, I when I play regular D&D, the mage is probably my favorite character because uh, you get like the big bag of spells that you can use. You'd have to memorize a set of spells every morning and then as you use them through the day, uh, D&D uses a, a Vancian system, which means you memorize a group of spells in a day and then as once you uh, cast a spell, you forget the spell for the rest of the day until you go to sleep, and you can rememorize them uh, the next morning. Uh, D and D basically auto memorizes spells when you wake up. So once you had uh, eight hours of sleep, uh, then you wake up and you have that block of spells. Basically, that means that before you go to sleep, you've got to choose which spells you want to memorize. You'll see that in the game itself. Anyway, uh, so the thing about the mage that makes it a little bit controversial is that when you're first starting out mages are ridiculously underpowered like you get like two spells that you can use and once those spells are gone you're basically like this four hit point dude who can throw darts or sling shots at people it's they're almost completely useless but they're kind of uh like league of legends has uh carry guys they're kind of like a carry class because once you get up to like level 10 mages are badass you can start throwing lightning bolts and fireballs at people. You start casting all these other crazy spells that like hold guys in place. Actually, that's a cleric spell, hold person, but you can cast all these other crazy spells that like, you know, confuse monsters that causes this massive um, uh, stinking cloud that makes monsters not uh, get used at all. If we get up, when we get up to Baldur's Gate 2, I have a tendency to be really, really cheap with one of the uh, level bosses and uh, use that on him to, to stop him in his tracks so he can't do anything um there's just uh, there's some charm spells you can use which like literally make guys fight on your side um summoning is great i mean there's just so many spells you can use and the thing is if you do it right you can plan out which spells you're going to use for different encounters and so like you know even like you know you got like say 10 spells to choose from those spells can be completely different for like one group of guys and for another group and so it's like you have like five times as many spells as you really have because you know you can mix and match them so much uh you know again with that thing that you got to sleep before you do that not that sleeping's a big deal you'll sleep a lot in this game trust me um there's some very specific kinds of uh guys basically you get a small bonus to learning and i think it's just learning i don't think it's casting uh, but learning spells in, in some of these um, areas, like, you know, you want to cast protective magics. Why would you do that? That's not what the mage is for. That's what a cleric's for. But if you want to cast, cast a lot of protection spells, you can make an abjure. Conjurers are big in, create, in summoning guys. Again, that is one of the ways a lot of guys like to beat this game is just by, especially if you're playing uh, like the, the single player version where you don't hire any NPCs. That is a way to get around that easily. Like you just beginning of the fight, summon a bunch of dudes, have them fight in the front, and then you're in the back picking and picking off bad guys. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely a good one. As with all these, it's a bit of a carry class, so prepare to, you know, run away a lot if you're doing that single player thing. Um, so yeah, conjuration and summoning, uh, so you can detect and divine magics there. Um, again, in an actual DD game, it's kind of a cool guy to have. You have got like a couple uh, mages, for example, and in this, maybe not so much. Uh, enchanters uh, can uh, are good at casting spells like charm and that kind of thing. Illusionists um, are actually that's what a, the type of mage a dwar a gnome can be um, that uh, allows you to you can't you actually get a minus to 
invoker evoke uh, stuff that believe invokers are the guys that yeah the guys the fireballs and evocation so yeah you'll see the different kinds of spells and the, the different spells spell types in the the description of, the, of each spell um when you play uh you might also want to pick up uh you know go and grab an nfaq for one of the sites around here to get that um but yeah i mean there's a bunch of different ones different guys that you can use the wild mage i think is basically kind of sort of a believe the uh sort of the sorcerer no not really you have a random wild magic effect chance of happening i'm not going to play a mage myself uh, there are a couple mages you can get in the game that basically do good enough for the mages that you're doing 